Welcome to the edited recording of the WordPress Portsmouth Meetup held on the 17th of June 2020. Uh, WordPress Portsmouth Meetup is sponsored by Red IT and 34SP. Visit their websites and you can order hosting with discount of 25% on Red IT using the code WordUp or on 34SP you get a three month trial using their code WPPOMP. Today's talk was recorded, um, and, but we're just showing extracts of it, so people who didn't want to appear will not be appearing in it. And today's talk is entitled, How to Build a WordPress Website in 21 Steps, with Vicky Jakes. I hope you enjoy it. There we go. All right, so yeah, like I said, I'm Vicky Jakes. I am a um, online marketing and website optimization consultant basically. And what that means is I just help small businesses get up and running with um, uh, either focusing on creating a website for their small business or taking a website that they already have and making it perform better. Um, my background is well, I've been building websites for about 20 years now. This is my first WordPress website I ever built um, that I did for my band that I was in. Uh, quite a few years ago and uh, as soon as I start I, I kind of um, uh, phased out uh, me and coding in favor for kind of getting on with other things I it just got a little bit too difficult for me at some <laughs> at some point um, and um, I found WordPress and decided I absolutely loved it because I you know I didn't need to know too much code to kind of get up and running with a website um and for the past well since 2007 2006 seven, so sort of for the past 13 14 years i've been working um in the online and digital marketing world so i've worked for big agencies like ogilvy i've worked for medium-sized agencies like nitro i've worked for little independent agencies helping um big clients from big corporate companies, mostly finance, from health from wellness, from the pharmaceutical sector, build massive platforms and websites. I have put my fingers into most of the, the CMS pies that are out there. I've just made that up as a, an analogy, like Drupal and um, Joomla, but my heart definitely is with WordPress. This is me being really obnoxious, winning an award for some of the work that I helped a team with uh, my expertise is in project management and leading teams and working with the come here and talk to you guys today about WordPress and in particular um, how to get up and running with uh, WordPress in just 21 steps. Now, my, um, my kind of journey with the big corporates ended a couple of years ago when I decided to set up on my own and just work with small businesses. And it, it's a calling that I could, that I could hear <laughs> like a few years prior to that. Um, and once I had kids and wanted more flexibility with my time, it just kind of made sense. Um, and what this talk is this evening, just to kind of warn you guys, is this isn't, this isn't meant for anyone who is very experienced with WordPress. There's probably going to be a lot of things in here that those who've been around a while have heard and they know. And this talk is not meant to teach you guys how to suck eggs, as it were. What it's meant to do is um, just put in a very plain roadmap how a small business, and you know, if you're not watching this live and you're watching it later, you know, that could apply to you, how how you can get started with a WordPress website and and and, and how easy it can be when you just know how and you have the steps in front of you. So that's just a caveat before we continue. Um, I have personally built quite a few WordPress websites over the years. I don't do it so much anymore. My passion these days is actually helping small business owners get up and running and doing it themselves. And this came about a little bit by accident because when I started out on my own a couple of years ago, uh, I took some clients from my agency days. I was still freelancing for agencies and 
trying to find those small business clients um in particular you know women who who are a bit like me they just kind of come out of corporate and they wanted to get up and running with their sort of kitchen table business or whatever and i'd say to them great would you like me to build you a website <laughs> they'd be like i can't afford you even if i made it as cheap as i possibly could um it you know it was still something that that's my children by the way oh no like it's just something that they couldn't afford and actually what transpired was that they wanted to learn how to do this stuff themselves so my pro my process that i got up <laughs> sorry guys bear with me there we go and um, actually it takes two days <laughs> to build um a website this is zoom isn't it it's live and these are my children and it's bedtime so that's the screaming that you can hear in the background so my process actually takes two days right because i've got all of this 20 years of experience and i thought that would be really attractive to my small business clients guys you know i can get this website up and running for you really quickly but still they wanted to learn how to do this themselves and it's not a surprise right um a lot of small business owners it transpires are very creative and they want control and um, they've had experience working with agencies or individuals or whatever where they've not been given that control <laughs> thanks guys yeah we have all been there um and um actually they, they want to learn but the resources out there are, are, are well they're overwhelming actually you know just putting in how to build a wordpress website into google you know brings back millions and millions of results um so this is why i decided to come up with um the concept of helping people build their own wordpress website and i created something last summer called the wordpress boot camp um and the idea was that i would um, invite 100 testers um that i would recruit in various groups and, and kind of ads and get them into um a kind of intensive uh, mini course that i would build as i went along based on their feedback and monitoring how you know they responded to you know my process and maybe if things were a bit too techy or whatever and um uh, my the aim was for these guys not to do it in two days but to actually build a wordpress website in 21 days um, so <laughs> off, off I went, got up and running. It was all virtual. I recruited my 100 business owners, invited them to take part in the boot camp for free. And um, that's me doing one of the, the many daily Facebook lives um, that I would have where I would walk my members through the lessons and then I would record lessons and give them access um, to a membership platform. Um, to, to kind of work through uh, and start building their website. Um, that combined with group coaching sessions, where we'd rock up on Zoom and um, talk about you know, the problems that they were having as they went through each of the steps in terms of building the website, um, it, uh, was very exciting. And it meant at the end of the 21 days, over half actually managed to have a website that was in near completion in a state of near completion essentially um so it, it was one of the best three weeks professionally i've ever been through because it was it was intense i was creating content as i went i was asking for feedback once a week anonymous feedback so really taking it on the chin about how um my members um felt about the lessons understanding the different learning styles that each of them had as well and understanding actually that there were groups of learning styles in terms of how um, my business owners um, responded and wanted to build their websites um, and um, what this talk is going to outline is the steps that i have refined starting out all you know that last year all those kind of months ago with the wordpress bootcamp that you know i feel works in terms of putting in front of a small business as a roadmap to getting a website up and running and um, what was really interesting is what the members what the beta testers learn about building their own websites 
Um, and one member said, I should have done this earlier. I made it way more complicated when I first started out by wanting to do it myself, right? And so this thing, a lot of business owners are in a rock and a hard place, right? Because they don't have the money to spend on the two, three grand website that they've been quoted, but they don't know where to start with all the information and they end up in a kind of analysis paralysis and don't ever get started and that's a real shame because what if you could just get over <laughs> the, the kind of the, the 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 kind of the tech you can get on with earning money for your small business because that's what it's all about yes you know, building websites is amazing but really like the the actual long-term goal is to make money to feed, feed your family or go on nice holidays all of those things uh, someone else said, I'm more technically capable than I thought when things are broken down into bite-sized manageable steps. So again, this is the thing, there's so much information out there, but to organically absorb that information and understand the steps needed to get to a place where you can build a website is difficult. You know, it takes experience. You know, I've had 20 years experience like I said, all those sort of 13, 14 years experience in the corporate space. I think I've possibly seen everything that could go wrong with a website. I, I even did a presentation on this a couple of years ago about um, projects that go wrong. Like, I think I've seen everything that's possibly gone wrong. Um, but a small business owner building a new WordPress website for the first time hasn't right and um they're going to go through that learning curve and why do they need to when actually they could have that roadmap laid out for them so my process is simple right you pick a content management system wordpress of course that's why we're all here because of the awesomeness uh, of wordpress um and uh, <clears throat> uh, this is a hosted wordpress uh, version as well as opposed to, you know so you need your own hosting and you need to take wordpress and install that on that hosting as opposed to going to wordpress.com where they host it for you and they manage all the things for you right it's very it's very easy to think that might be a more attractive option the dot com option um because you don't have to think about hosting and, and more of the kind of technical elements that i'm going to go through in this presentation but actually um, my hunch was before I started the WordPress bootcamp that if I could get um, uh, these guys actually tinkering around with the concept of hosting with domains, that it would really unblock a lot of fear that they had about dealing with tech. I hear the word technophobe quite a lot and I just don't believe it. I don't believe it's the thing. I just think you haven't, um, you haven't tried it. You haven't thought about it. So that was a risk, but I thought let's go into that. We're going to do a, um, a kind of a self-hosted WordPress option. Then I recommend a theme builder. Now there's lots out there. There's some really good ones, Elementor, for example, but I, I picked Divi specifically and Divi is a theme builder um, that's made in, uh, created and managed by a company called Elegant Themes. You have to pay for a license, but actually the cost of that is much cheaper than compared to, again, paying for WordPress.com or paying for Squarespace or Shopify. And um, the power of, of using Divi, I'll, I'll explain in the kind of following slides, is um, yes, it's very customizable, but the power is that it's got nearly, well, it's over 150 now pre-built designs, pre-built layouts within, within it. Um, that you can load into each of the pages in your site and get up and running really quickly with um, a pre-built page. You don't have to learn how to design from scratch. And this is another thing that stopped a lot of the small business owners that I was talking to a couple of years ago when I started out from, from starting, right? Because they, 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 um, they open up, uh, either WordPress for the first time or maybe Wix, for example, and they start building a site as best that they can, but they don't understand design aesthetics or, you know, what makes, what, what makes a nice user experience for example. And why should they? They're small business owners. You know, they've got so much on their plate already, aside from the making and the delivering, you know, making of their products and delivering of their services, and then understanding they, they need to do 
selling of those as well oh and the tax is coming up and oh they've got to deal with the post office and the suppliers and then getting them to say well you've got to build your own website but you also have to understand design concepts and spacing and fonts and color like it's all too much right so this is why uh, you know i think for small businesses having something that's pre-built that's was almost ready made but you can have an element of control with that you know, so you bring your own logo along you bring your own font along you bring your own colors along it taps into the creative side that my small my very creative small business owners had where they wanted to tinker and have a play around but didn't mean that they had to go and do you know a graphic design degree first um <laughs> uh, so once you load those pre-built page uh, pre-built page templates into the site um, just using a very simple site structure that I recommend in the bootcamp. Um, then it's all about adding images and text, right? And so that's where my members are spending most of their time with swapping images and text, right? And really focusing on the content and selling their stuff. And then another big focus for me is was to ensure that um, uh, the members kind of got their sites integrated with third party marketing tools. So it didn't just become a website that kind of sits there like a brochure site. That is actually collecting emails for them or it's collecting data that they can use to serve ads to or they can measure the impact of the, the content that they've created. So that's a really important part of having a website. Um, and then you hand the site over. So that's my process for how I get my websites for my own clients up and running so quickly and um, I, you know, I was very much inspired talking about wordpress.com about their onboarding process because when you go and sign up for a wordpress.com website it, it asks you questions and qualifies you at each and every step of the way with its wizard and then at the end of it you have a website you know it should be that easy right but Again, I wanted to give my guys that that kind of technical control for reasons I'll go into in a bit. But um, I was definitely inspired by this process. So let me know in the chat if you've got any questions as I'm talking, by the way. And also if you understand or you've got any questions about the difference between WordPress.com and um, just what we call WordPress.org, because they come up quite a lot, don't they, um, in the WordPress world. And it's very easy to get confused about that. Also, let me know as well if you've had a tinker around with other content management systems like Wix or Shopify or Squarespace or the others as well. Um, so... The reason why I'm a big fan of this, you know, half baked, almost ready to go. Half baked is in. It's almost, it's almost ready. Not that it's not good enough. Um, type of website um, build is because um, the sooner you can go live with your website, right? The sooner you can understand if the products or services that you are offering resonates with your customers, right? If they're going to buy them. I have, in my corporate um, times, uh, worked on big projects where, like one was a 50,000 pound website, um, and that, was, that website was completed uh, at great pressure from the client. Um, in under two months, eight weeks, I think we did it, or something like that, the, which, you know, was, was quite a short time, I think 10 years ago when this website was created. Um, especially for an agency to do. And then that website remained in client approval <laughs> for nine months, nine months. And by the time the website went live, it had no market. The people it was meant for have moved on. They were looking at other companies that totally missed the chance to make an impact. And you know, the reason it was um, in approval for so long is because it was a pharmaceutical website, which those were notorious for being in approval um, for a very long time. Um, so if you can test what you're doing using your website, if it's live, you know, if you can see what content you write resonates with your users, you know, if you can see what blogs you're writing, um, resonates, gets clicks, gets time spent on the page, if you can analyze that stuff, then you know if what you're doing is working on or not. If you're procrastinating and not getting up and running with a website because you're worried what people are think, you'll, ne you'll never know because it's not live, <laughs> essentially. Um, so here we go. 
right the, these are the steps and um, I can see questions coming up guys so I will come back and answer these as and when uh, I can see the chat so I will come back and answer these as, as and when they're pertinent so step one is buy some hosting right and it is easier than ever to buy hosting yourself as a business owner right you, you don't need an agency or a developer or someone to do this on your behalf right and the platforms like the, the customer centric platforms like you might have heard of GoDaddy and Bluehost WP Engine and um, they are very customer as in you know the Joe Public centric right so you can go onto their platforms and buy hosting um, for yourself and um, they want to make it as easy as possible for you to buy that hosting, right? So you'll find that the user experience on all of all of these platforms to buy is very easy. Um, they'll try and sell you lots of um, different options, but most of the time you just you just need a, a standard website, and it shouldn't cost you more than I don't know. I think a hundred quid a year is probably pushing it. You can definitely find deals for around sixty quid a year. Um, can I interrupt? Yes, please. I think there's someone waiting to join. Oh, okay, because I'm like in control now, aren't I? So mm. let's just see who's waiting to join. France Francesca Gole. Perfect. There we go. I'll keep an eye on that and see if anyone else mm. um, needs to come in. All right. So um, it just you can rock up to any of these sites and, and get up and running and buy hosting quite quickly so the choice really is about how much um, uh, money you have to spend and also uh, the deals that they can give you so TSO host is the, the hosting provider that I use and I talk to my membership about and the WordPress bootcamp about and um, only because they, they kind of tend to throw in a free domain name and other things like that so that's just something to think about when you're shopping around but yes, the next step is to buy or point your domain at your website. It's so much easier to buy a brand new domain when you buy hosting from the same provider because what that provider should do for you is set it all up, right? So you don't have to do anything in the settings. Um, if you do have uh, a precious domain that you want to migrate over, um, or point at your hosting, then um, your hosting provider should be able to help you with that, right? They've got FAQs. The reason why I recommend TSO Host um, to my members as well is because their support is amazing. They're based in the UK and you can get on a little chat and talk to them. And this kind of blew the minds of a lot of my WordPress bootcamp people last year because they had assumed once you buy hosting, that's it. They didn't realize you've got customer service support. That's what you're paying for. So if you're not going to employ an agency or a developer, use the people who you're buying from, right? You know, they're giving you a service. You are entitled to ask them for help with domain pointing. And sometimes you're going to get a real techie person that kind of is going to talk, um, you know, maybe maybe in too many, too many tongues of tech babble that you won't understand. But if you go back and ask them to explain it and break it down, they always will because it's part of of the service that they offer so you can go and search for a domain name it's just crazy now there's so many <laughs> so many um domain name extensions that you can go for um, so i would always recommend having something that is um simple to say if you were talking to someone on the telephone about it basically so if you have to talk um if you have to describe uh hyphen vicky hyphen jakes hyphen you know that's going to be uh, difficult for someone to understand um okay so that is um buying a domain next up is installing wordpress right so someone asked a question here which is how do we know um if we have wordpress.com or wordpress.org so actually um the, the difference is is i'll just show you really quickly because I'm, i knew this would come up because it came up in the brighton chat is here we go is um wordpress.com is a is a bit like um having a facebook account essentially you go here they host everything for you all you do is walk up and create your content right and you'll know if you have a wordpress.com account because you can go to wordpress.com and log in 
and it will look a little bit like this. If you actually have a hosted WordPress site, then um, you'll have to log into your site, not via WordPress.com, but you have to log in using um, this, um, this kind of uh, extension to your URL, WP Admin. And when you log in, it'll look a bit like this. So they're very different. Um, the difference here is that my site is hosted with my hosting provider, with TSO Host, and this WordPress.com site is hosted with WordPress. They control a lot more um, uh, and restrict a lot more things that you can do on here compared to just having the code installed, like the WordPress code installed myself. So that, that's kind of like the difference. And so you'll know if you go to your URL and you put WP admin in and you can log in that way, then you have a self-hosted WordPress site. All right, so I don't know where that disappeared to. Let's get it back. Perfect. So next up is installing WordPress. And in the old days, this was terrifying, absolutely terrifying thought to many people because you actually used to have to take that code, the WordPress code itself, and install it onto your um, your 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 host, your 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 hosting account. Um, and actually, your hosting provider will either give you the tools to do this yourself. So uh, most hosting providers, like good quality ones, will have something called a control panel that you can log into and you can just install the WordPress code onto um, the server, you know, using an automation. Um, or very likely is kind of what's happened in the past 18 months, two years, is that they'll just do it for you. Once you sign up, they'll take you through a wizard and ask you a bit like that WordPress.com step-by-step -step that we, we saw at the beginning of this and ask you, what would you like? How would you like it? Here you go. Um, and they will give you a, a pre-installed setup of WordPress. So you know, it's not as difficult as you think it is because they're going to be doing the work for you. I would say the tricky part is getting on with WordPress and configuring it, right? So that's the next step. And it's really important um, to, to kind of do your admin on your WordPress site first before uh, getting swept away with content and, um, and design. When you first install, um, well, when WordPress is first installed on your hosting account, um, by your provider, and um, it will automatically have this theme. Well, I think this, yeah, it is the current theme, 2020, um, which is very lovely. Um, and it will automatically give you a design, a theme. A theme is like a jacket that's worn on the outside of your WordPress site that, that kind of shapes how you, you know, the design of it, the fonts and the colors and whatnot. <clears throat> and it's perfectly adequate, but, You'll need to go in to your WordPress setup and make sure that you've updated your password and you've added yourself as a user. That's really important to do, right? Because it, you just saw me show you how to log into um, a WordPress admin. And most of the time, that's the way that most WordPress sites can, uh, like the admin login can be found by just going forward slash WP admin. And that makes WordPress a a little bit more vulnerable to you know uh, the more unsavory unsavory types out there on the internet. So you'll need to go in and update your username and your password and make sure that they're they're not admin passwords, which is what all fresh installs of WordPress used to have back in the day. For those of you who recall, <clears throat> um, brilliant i'm just making sure oh there's lots of chat going on here as well so i'll come back and check on this in a sec so making sure those passwords are updated and you know they're more than just you know password or pass is really important and um, you'll also need to add a site title so that you can start to feel ownership of your website as well and then you need to make sure that you hide your site from search engines because in effect what you have right once you've bought your hosting your domain um, has been pointed to your hosting by your hosting provider um, as part of your package is you've got a live WordPress site right and live means it's out there on the internet it's going to be found by Google at some point so what you can do is actually set um, a checkbox within the admin that will stop Google being able to crawl your site and you can get on and build it <clears throat> and that is something as well that tends to put a lot of people off uh, with 
getting on with building a website from the small business world they um they, they feel exposed they don't want people to see what they're working on um and there are ways to stop people seeing your website um like installing we'll talk about this in a second installing a plugin um that that can kind of hide your website as you're building it from people viewing it but also making sure that you're hiding it from google who's the other other person in your life um that you need to always be thinking about with your wordpress website right so i just hinted at it there but the next stage once you've done that initial admin is to add plugins and plugins are like the the kind of power-ups that you can add on to a WordPress site which takes it from essentially what is a uh, a very good content blogging platform that has pages and then posts which are like pages with um, uh, dates and, and the ability to be categorized and turn uh, your WordPress website into you know full-on e-commerce platforms <laughs> full-on news platforms um membership platforms social platforms uh, plugins are very powerful and you can add plugins from within the admin and um search for plugins um, um uh, that that people have created more often than not for free sometimes they have um a, a kind of a premium price attached to them as well <clears throat> um, but again, this is another thing that tends to slow down the progress of small business owners when I talk to them because they don't know where to start with plugins. And my recommendation, just for the very minimum amount of plugins that you need on your website, is to have one that um, allows you to back up what you're doing in case, God forbid, everything gets deleted or <clears throat> you do something that breaks everything i mean it's not as easy as that by the way but it's just nice to have that insurance then have another plugin that helps your site um detect that undesirable traffic that i was talking about before um and um uh, allow you to kind of create a firewall around your website that stops potential um hackers logging into your site or um or traffic coming to your site that kind of, could kind of overload it um uh, from your hosting provider so having having that uh, a plugin that can kind of help you out with that as well and um, can help give you reassurance as you get up and running with your new site and you're building it that you can get on with building it without having to worry about security WordPress used to have a bit of a, a reputation for not being secure, but it's just not true these days because there are some amazing plugins that can put your mind at, at peace and allow you to get on and build your website. Then you need a good SEO plugin. I prefer Yoast. Uh, I'll talk about all the, my favorite plugins towards the end as well. Um, I know people, there are other SEO plugins available. SEO means search engine optimization, and it allows you to, like a, uh, the plugins um, uh, functionality when connected to your WordPress website will allow you to add extra information that can be picked up by Google and thus make your site behave um, and, and show uh, more visibly in search engine results for keywords that you want to be found for. Then I always recommend, this is non-negotiable guys, is that you have some type of analytics tracking on your website. Again, I recommend Google Analytics, but there are other tracking tools out there because if you can't understand what pages users are looking at and you can't see where they've come from in terms of the traffic and you can't see how they're behaving on your site, you don't know what you need to improve right and um, then if you're going to write lots of content and lots of blogs and you're going to invite people to comment on those blogs i recommend spam protection as well <laughs> spam is still a funny word after all these years um, that will allow um the site to filter out spam comments it's just unfortunately part and parcel of being uh, a website owner is that you're going to have to put up with you know undesirables out there and and, <laughs> and we were talking about uh, the potential of being hacked before but um spam bots and functionality that's out there to kind of input code into your comments and 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 
worry your sight for undesirable reasons is just it's just a, a normal part of modern day website ownership but you can protect your site from that and then as a kind of add-on to that i do recommend having some type of capture or limited login um plugin on your website as well so that you can stop undesirables you know trying to repeatedly log into your website so the analogy I give, uh, I gave to my WordPress bootcamp members was, um, uh, you know, like you, you hear that there's a lot of meteorites that are out there, a lot of asteroids, and you don't think about them, right? Until you're told that so many hit the earth and they're very small and actually some really skirt past the earth, you know, uh, in, terms of, in terms of kind of meters sometimes and it's a bit too close to call. But actually, isn't it better when you didn't know about that and you could just get on with your life and not worry about potential disasters that could hit the earth? It's a bit like that with your website. It's always going to be vulnerable and prone to undesirables out there. But these tools will let you know that they exist but you might not have known that they existed before okay so next up is adding the theme and we, we spoke about this earlier my theme of choice is Divi um, and um, uh, Steve, oh, actually, there's a couple of good questions here. I'm going to quickly dig into the questions before I go into Divi then. Um, so Stephen says, doesn't Capture require that you expose your site to Google? Yes, I mean, you can um, utilize the Google Capture um, and uh, integrate your site with Google that way. There are other ways. There's limited login plugins, literally limited login plugin that you can install onto your site. Um, you guys are talking about um dot org and dot com as well so we're going to get to ssls um a little bit down the line that's one of the steps as well um so what is oh this is a great question this is uh, nikki thank you this is a really good um segue then so what is the difference between divi templates and wordpress tem templates that are free so thanks for that question it's like this was, it was perfect for this so um wordpress templates are very fixed in in my opinion um and what you get with divi is you get um uh, the ability um to control almost every part of of your page you can't do that with a free wordpress theme because the, the way that they've been built is very fixed so it's it's likely you'll be able to change a headline on a page and the image of a, you know um a kind of a banner for example and perhaps the colors of your fonts and things like that but imagine having control of every single part of your site how big that banner appears how big it appears on mobile, <laughs> um, you know, integrating sign-up forms, um, moving something from the left over to the right. You're not going to get that with a fixed free WordPress theme. And free WordPress themes are great if you are going to stick with exactly the layout that they give you and you don't want to grow. But most of the small business owners that I talk to want to grow, right? They, they start out with a few, like, few pages on the sites, but they have ambitions to turn the, what they offer online into you know, a really big business especially over these past few months what i've noticed is you know a lot of the service-based people moving their business online relying more on their websites and having the flexibility in the design of your website um, to be able to control elements on the page is really powerful because what tends to happen is a lot of the business owners that i deal with um, are reliant on third parties you know agencies individuals developers or whatever and have to ask permission to have things change because it has to be done in the code. And I have every respect as an ex agency person for that process, but a small business owner shouldn't have to ask permission to update text on their website. They should be able to do that quickly because you remember we were talking a few slides ago about the power of getting up and running quickly um, on your website. So that's why I recommend Divi. Um, so once you get Divi installed, you can figure your plugins. Right. So you make sure all of those plugins um, that I was talking about before are working. Um, and then we move on to structure. Right? We don't get into the sexy design part yet. It's all about setting up your menu structure. And um, it, it, within WordPress, I always recommend just going into the, the kind of the admin side and setting up 
dummy pages, right? Just uh, fleshing them out. Okay, so you've got a home page and about page. Perhaps you've got a services page. It really depends on like the, the business that you have, but you really need to come to your website build with an idea of how you're going to sell yourself. And the way that you can do that is just start to map out here in um, the menu admin, the pages that you're going to have without the pressure of actually having to create the pages, right? So you can go into the pages, create new page, not add any content to it. And then you'll see those pages come up here in the menu. And then you can play around with them, play around with the order, see if it feels right, see if you're missing any content. And this is a really important step that I think, well, I've seen it happen so many times in the corporate space um, that you know, uh, is skipped over. Um, so setting up that menu structure, super duper important, and there's no pressure to create the content for those pages. If you're a product person and you're selling products, you're going to want to have product pages and the ability to sell those products, right? If you're a service-based person, you'll want to have an about page so you can build trust about uh, what you offer because probably they're buying into you. They're not buying a product, they're buying you and your service. Um, and you'll want to have your services pages and then you'll need a contact page. Um, at the very least as well. And so in theory, you could get up and running with a home page and about page, a product or a service page and a contact page. And that's all just to get up and running and live. You only need four pages, even less possibly. But um, the idea is that you would build on those pages. So having to have everything perfect up front with 100 pages, beautifully written content isn't needed. What's more important is that you get up and running with the the basic offering that you have as a business and then give yourself permission to continue updating that content forever and ever as long as the website's live your website is never finished by the way then you load in these pre-built layouts from Divi and like I said I mean it's actually gone up since I've done this screenshot it's over 165 now and this is definitely worth the 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 kind of um, the license fee alone because these have packs of designs. So we were just talking about those basic pages that you need to get up and running. What um, what Divi has within it is um, flavors of businesses, all with pages like a homepage about a services, a blog, a contact, whatever. So you could just load in these pre-built layouts and hey presto you've got a site up and running um one of the things that i always find found really interesting um doing the boot camp last year was i i asked my members to um kind of create their um their the header and footers first right and have a play around with the menu make sure the, like the site structure is there and um, they'd, they'd start to get a little bit designery on me and I'd see, you know, yellow fonts on pink backgrounds and things like that. Some really far out colors, but uh, things wouldn't click for them until those pages had loaded, right? And so <laughs> this, this analogy here is like quite funny because we always used to talk in, um, in the agency world, oh God, this client thinks that design is just created overnight, right? And um, clients didn't understand like the hours and hours it took to create a design, to test the design, to build it. They just wanted things up and running and built really quickly. And, you know, we'd scoff at that. They don't understand our craft. But actually, the truth of it is, is that um, people don't want to know the craft that's behind creating <laughs> you know a beautifully coded page they just want the page they just want it up and running really quickly so why can't you have a button that literally just loads the design in like that and because the the joy that was on my members faces once they'd loaded in those those layouts and they could see oh my goodness i have a site was um was amazing you know because it, it, it they realized it overcome a lot of preconceptions they had about how websites were built that you didn't have to go through weeks and months of you know back and forth however the configuring the design was the phase that took the longest and it will be the same for you as well and again i'm giving you permission you're never going to get this right you're going to come back and tinker around with your websites that's totally okay to do right um, you know, Divi allows you to um, uh, have control over every part of the layout of the page, like I was talking about before. 
So, um, and that's because it, it's, it's, um, it builds your page in sections, in columns, and in rows, and then allows you to add pieces of functionality to each of those spaces. And Divi comes with a lot of pre-built functionality where you don't need third-party code, third-party plugins um, to kind of get it up and running. So you, you don't need a third-party plugin that allows you to connect to an email service or add a form or have a pop-up or anything like that. You know, these, these things are integrated with Divi. And the user, the, the other reason why I chose it is because the usability is just, it's just great. Like if you want to build in this kind of code of view, you can. It also has a visual builder as well uh, for those that just want to go straight into their, their, their homepage and change some text. You know, it just takes seconds compared to the weeks it might have taken if they had to ask for permission to get this done. The other thing as well is um, for those of you who are watching this who are a little bit more seasoned when it comes to web development and web, de web design is seeing this what we call a wireframe view, you know, um, uh, is, is uh, uh, pretty common and it's something we're very familiar with. But seeing this wireframe view as a small business owner and understanding the things that it takes, the, the pieces of puzzle, the Tetris, if you like, of putting a website together starts to, well, it begins an awakening in how you understand how websites are built, how the web works in general. So I definitely see kind of two points in the process where small business owners go, ah, oh, is when they buy the hosting and they go through understanding, you know, how websites are hosted and how the internet works in many ways. And then when they get here and understand how tech works how the builder works and how they can control elements on the page and when you can understand that stuff right it makes you approach every other part of online marketing with confidence um, so like I said it's got all these pre-built modules as well so you can add lots of different pieces of functionality onto your site and the pieces of functionality that I recommend are adding a contact form so we go through that step because it's really important that people can contact you on your site integrating um, with an email marketing provider um, like MailChimp for example or other email marketing providers are available because giving your website users the ability to keep it in touch with you if they decide not to stay on the site or contact you is really important email marketing goes hand in hand as a small business owner with running a website um, one of the very smallest things that I miss, but is really important is adding a favicon, that little bit of branding that appears in a tab. And again, these are small things that are really important parts <laughs> of the process of building a site that kind of awaken the understanding that small, my small business owners have had about building websites and then connecting and adding their social icons as well. I'm a real believer that, you know, having social channels as a small business is really important, but they should drive to your website. You shouldn't worry. And if users are at the end of a process on your website, you should give them somewhere to go next. You don't need to put your socials front and center on your website. Then we start to move into the, the kind of going live stages, right? So um, you've got your content, you've configured it, you've added images, you've started to do the finessing with favicons, with adding your social icons and things like that. Then it's all about making sure your site is compliant. And you, if you're a small business owner, especially if you're watching this from the UK, we've got the German EU people watching this as well, is that your need to make sure your site is um, GDPR compliant, you've got privacy disclaimers. Um, and WordPress is amazing in that it comes with pre-built um, alerts and information, and there's even a template that you can go in and add, and it will make it there, it'll be there already for you as a draft, probably that you'll just need to publish. Um, I'm not going to give any type of legal advice or information here right now, but just to say that don't forget this. All right, it is a really important part of owning a website, especially if you have things on your website where you're going to be collecting customer data, like a contact form or an email sign-up form. So don't forget it. Um, and then the next step, once you feel like I'm confident that I'm being compliant is to configure, go back to that plugin, whatever SEO plugin that you um, set up and configure it so that you are um, uh, going to be found and understood easily by Google. 
I do find a lot of small business owners, again, tend to get into analysis paralysis at this point, right? Because they think my title's not perfect, um, my keyword's not perfect. But the idea is if you can write an individual meta description and a title that contains your keyword, at the very least, that's enough. You can come back and tinker with this stuff later right um tools like yoast for example have a traffic light system which in a way is amazing because you know it gives you an indication if, if the things you're doing are right or not but it's also a real big pain up there because uh if you don't get uh, your traffic light on green people spend hours hours and hours tinkering around with keywords and then what you're doing is configuring your site for a plugin and not for your end users so remember to look up and go to search and see how they're searching and make sure that you've got phrases and keywords on your site that they are already searching for and someone asked a question about this as well was um adding an ssl certificate so this is um uh, the small piece of code that your hosting provider can add to your um uh, to your to your hosting account on this server that says that your domain is secure you'll need to buy an ssl certificate there are free ones but um i really recommend just buying one <laughs> And not relying on a free option your hosting provider should give you discounts and things like that when you sign up for the first time but if you are an online store or you are selling via online payments you'll need one of these otherwise you won't be able to run your site and as of last year um, actually you should all as small business owners invest and have an SSL certificate on your site because if that little padlock shows in the URL of someone's browser then Google is going to love you a whole lot better than sites that don't have it. So yeah, you can see, look, a little padlock makes everyone feel happy. The warning sign does not. <laughs> and then before you go live, go back a couple of steps and go and optimize those images, right? You can use a tool like w, uh, WP Smoosh. I love the name Smoosh, uh, which will crunch down the file sizes of the images that you've uploaded to your site nine times out of ten if your site is slow and not performing very well is because you've uploaded that 10 meg picture to your home page so make sure that you optimize your site images before you go live and then we're almost there guys well done is make sure you back your site up remember in the beginning i recommended um, that you install a plugin to keep your site updated, uh, to keep your site backed up in case anything goes wrong. Um, I personally use Updraft Plus. There are other backup tools out there, especially ones um, like connected to Jetpack as well, I think. Um, but you know, if you're not backing your site up and something goes wrong, it's, it's, it's really going to go wrong. It's going to be very difficult to restore that. Stephen says, I, uh, I added really simple SSL to my site in a matter of minutes with Let's Encrypt. It took half an hour. Absolutely. SSL is, I, I probably skirted over how simple this is, but if you ask your hosting provider to, to buy this for you and assign it to your hosting account, then you can use a plugin like really simple SSL to attach it to your website. And okay so updraft plus is your friend and you should get into the habit my business owning website friends uh, of backing up your site on a regular basis okay before you update your plugins before you update your theme before you update your version of wordpress please promise me that you will do this from now on and never forget and you can even add a setting here that will um, do it automatically for you then we're almost ready for live we're going to uncheck that box that says uh, hide my site from Google. We're going to turn off any plugins that might have hidden your site from the world. Um, and we're going to then submit our sites to Google if you want to or Bing and make sure and you can do that using the Google Search Console and the, the, the Bing tools that are available as well so that those search engines can start crawling your site and showing you in search results. And so in effect, once you've done that, once you've switched all of those things off, you have gone live and you can sit down and have a cup of tea and maybe two biscuits, guys. Um, <laughs> I asked my guys last year with the WordPress Bootcamp, um, how far did you get with the course? And over half of them got their site live out of 100. In, in reality, actually, we ended up having just over 200 because I did two rounds of the bootcamp uh, and it was the same result second round. 
um, most people said three to four weeks was all they needed with those guided steps. And um, it just gave everyone so much confidence knowing how to do this themselves. You know, and even someone who is still utilizing a third party um, uh, provider to kind of help them with their, their website felt more confident about the language and about the system, about how, you know, the systems that are used to build their website and make any amends. Um, we've got Katie here. She uh, went from being a full time mum to a social media manager and she built this site on her own in Divi. I'm not doing any justice because it's actually got an amazing video um, uh, background showing there that's all optimized and looks really lovely. And then we've got Claire as well, who went from having nothing to creating a lady shooting community. All she had at the beginning was an idea of maybe she wants to sell shooting apparel, um, but in the end, actually, ended up created you know using the power of WordPress blogs, a community. Um, I'm most proud of Claire because she really like overcame a lot of um, technophobia to, to kind of create and do this herself. And then we've got Rachel as well. I'm not doing her any justice because her site looks absolutely amazing now. But you know, she wanted to create um, a coaching service um, uh, to help stress teachers um, and have all of her offerings on her website and to be able to offer kind of webinars and training and things like that um, and all of her lead magnets as well and um, so you know three uh, really awesome business owning ladies um, with their websites um, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I will share their links with this um, uh, with this presentation afterwards um, so thank you guys for letting me walk you through those 21 steps and um, please ask your questions um, either in the chat and I can just answer them out loud or um, if you do want to like talk and just have a chat with me direct I guess now is the time that we can do that as well so um, what is it? Nikki says what drives the structure one page sites are popular should I have a few HTML pages is there a guide there's a real difference between a one page website and what's called a landing page. So um, a landing page is often a, a one page site that has a, a purpose. Um, I'll show you a landing page guys, actually. Here we go. Perfect. Here's a landing page. Like landing pages quite often don't have menus or anything like that. They've just got one call to action, which is like a button <laughs> like this. Um, and uh, they have a purpose. They're, they exist so that people can um, drive traffic to them, but they're not great websites. What a website should be is like one of these that you can see here is a collection of pages um, that, that contain different facets of your business. And also Google does love it if you've got more than one page for your website as well. So there's a real difference there. If you're talking about websites that actually have all of that information and you jump down the page, I think that there is a, there was a trend for that and it's kind of going back to splitting those sections out into the individual pages again. And so um, I personally think that you have um, a better chance with Google when you have a page that is about the, the subject uh, matter that it contains. So it's very hard to have a one page website that tells Google, this has got my services, my product, my lead magnet, my contact on it. Um, actually, if you have individual pages then you can create meta information at the back of each of those pages that will just help you in search essentially. Um, oh, um, so um, Abba says, oh, yes, yeah, so she makes a really good point here about moving from WordPress.com to .org, that your SSL certificate is not transferable. And that's the, the same with a, a kind of um, most hosting providers the, or if you change domain names that you might have to create um, an SSL certificate. Uh, and says, wow, Vicky, that was amazing. You make it sound so achievable. Thank you. It is achievable. It is all about knowing the steps, right? And hopefully I've given you the guide, <laughs> guys, to be able to know what you need to work through systematically. And I'm all about doing things systematically and with a process, right? There's just a way to do it. And hopefully with, with the, these steps, you can go out and find your own resources. Um, there's lots of um, resources here on like WordPress TV, um, I was saying in the, in the chat as well. Um, so, uh, 
you know, go and do that, but just go through it systematically. Like there's a reason why the process works because otherwise <laughs> what tends to happen is a lot of small business owners go straight in for the design. Uh, they, 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 they create a page and don't think about, you know, the purpose of that page. They don't think about things like privacy policies <laughs> or favicons or things like that. But if you can work systematically through it, you've got a better chance of having a website that you'll be happy with putting live and then coming back to and tinkering with again and again. Um, so Mark says, I've been asked, asked often how to, it's easy is not an answer. <laughs> Thanks. You have now a way to present and maybe alter what you do. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, lots of hosting companies provide Let's Encrypt to get SSL certificates for free. Absolutely. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, oh, wow, guys, you guys are like having a write off chat here as well. So someone talks about the Astra theme as well. Another great um, uh, template, like um, a theme with templates that you can use. Absolutely. Um, and Elementor is also a really good one as well. I, Divi was my weapon of choice. It costs $89 a year to license. Um, so there is a cost there. And I think if you couple that with how much you're paying your hosting provider, um, I don't know what the exchange rate is at the moment, but let's just say in theory <clears throat> to have a website, like a, a self-hosted website using Divi without paying anything else on top, you know, it's going to cost you maybe 100 to 150 quid, depending on who you're hosted with. That's so much cheaper than <laughs> getting a website with Shopify or, you know, which is going to cost you 25, 30 quid a month anyway. Squarespace is much more expensive, you know, that's sort of 25 to 30 quid a month. And as you add extra pieces of functionality onto those platforms, they charge you. Whereas you can add extra pieces of functionality to your WordPress site using plugins without having to pay extra. Like, you know, Woo, um, WooCommerce, the e-commerce plugin is free, for example. Um, there are some amazing premium plugins like MemberPress if you wanted to create a membership platform, for example, and that's going to cost you a couple of hundred a year. But you, what, you, what that should be making you think is that your website isn't just kind of some free part of your marketing arm, that actually it's your business and you can build up to that, you know, just like my guys from the WordPress bootcamp have done. Um, so um, Nigel asked about the Divi cost as well is that you, I think you can pay like a one-off <clears throat> um, lifetime license of $200 I think um, so someone's asking about the SSA key protecting your website I think lots of people have um, answered that as well but um, it's essentially a way of confirming that you are your um, who you say you are as the domain owner um, Oh, brilliant. So, um, great, great, great. So Scott says that makes it 79p per month for the alpha plan. Um, Steve says having good quality images is important too. Absolutely. Um, and I feel like I'm getting to the end of these questions. Um, Julia says, how did you help people with designing their logo? And I just send them to canva.com to create a logo because if you go to canva.com there is a um a template um called logo with lots of pre-built logos so you can just go in here and put logo and there's lots of logos that you can go in and um essentially just put your business name in and the reason why i recommend it is because it then means that you know my boot campers weren't spending hours and hours thinking about the perfect logo design or trying to find a designer um, that could uh, you know, create the perfect logo and actually they could just get something up and running into their website really quickly and then if they were picking colors I usually send them to coolers.co to go and pick some colors that will let's see what fun colors coolers comes back with and um, that will give you the codes that you can input into into the, the Divi Builder and utilize that way. Um, and then for images, I usually recommend um, Unsplash because they're free, high quality images um, that you can utilize and that don't look too much like stock imagery. And the important thing is to not spend too much time thinking about 
um, you know, overthinking about the images and the logo and the colors because you can come back and change those later. You have the freedom. Um, yep, Pixels, Pixels is great as well. Uh, so Nikki says, marketing integrations, how best to do marketing, please? So <laughs> it's such a big subject. But um, I, I, I recommend um, that at the very least, you have on your websites some type of, have I got my, I think I might have missed a slide there. It might, it might be too much of a pain to go back, but um, you should have um, some type of email sign up form on your website to encourage users to sign up to an email list and pick MailChimp. It's, it's free. It's the one I usually recommend. It's got, you know, pros and cons, but it's free up to 2000 subscribers and you can integrate it into your WordPress website very easily with Divi. Yes, marketing could be a good subject. It's, 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 I think it's another hour, potentially, Drew. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you must, must, must um, start to capture the, the users who are coming to your website, right? If you are spending all of this time and effort right, creating your website, you've got your Yoast configured. So this is another part of marketing as well as search marketing. So you've got your Yoast or other search engine optimization plugin configured so that you're being found um, or being seen by Google for particular keywords and you're being found by users in those search results pages and you bring users to your website. Hurrah! And they don't stay, they're gone forever. So if you can at least, and most people aren't going to buy from you when they first land on your website. It's just fact. It takes at least well, salesforce.com say like six to eight points of contact with a prospect before they buy from you. And other people say it takes even more. So at the very least, try and grab um, their email um, so that you can remarket to them later. So you, you're focusing on search, right? And making sure your content in your site is search friendly. You're integrating with an email marketing provider so you can continue emailing your list, your users who have requested to hear more about you after they visited your website. And if you want to get really fancy pants, um, you can utilize uh, Facebook advertising, for example, and install the Facebook tracking pixel. And then you can retarget users who have already been to your website or particular pages on your website and serve them an ad across the Facebook ads network. <clears throat> Though all of those things are uh, applicable to users at any stage in the sales funnel, right? So uh, lots, of big <laughs> lots of big subjects there. Like we said, you could take an hour for that. But at the very least, start writing content, right? Get found. Do the emails and make sure you've got some type of Google Analytics in place so that you can see, you know, where your traffic's coming from. And then you can decide to either do more of the thing that's working or work hard on the things that aren't working. Um, and you guys are just talking about favicons as well. Yet Divi has it set up within its theme customizer. So all you need to do is just upload an image that you would like to appear as a favicon. And at the moment, I believe um, my one is just like a little um, square like this. And most WordPress themes um, will allow you to customize and add the, fav add the favicon. I don't know why I'm saying it like that via um, <laughs> the theme options or the theme customizer because every theme will have not just Divi but every WordPress theme will have that ability for you to upload a logo and for you to upload a favicon. Um, so yeah I mean there's lots to talk about with marketing as well so Abby's just asked um, you guys what you know want to know about a bit more in the chat. Brilliant. I feel like that was a, a, an epic question session there, guys. That was um, wonderful. That was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Does so anybody wonderful. else have any other questions before we stop the recording? And then we can go over to a bit of a social and um, and Vicky can stay around if you want to for a bit. Yeah, I'll be hanging out. Well, I've got a nice simple one that I'll ask and I'll leave the difficult one to later. Um, what percentage of your 200 test people actually integrated the email marketing oh um that's a really good question i don't know the percentage but it was quite a high number because it was part of like getting live essentially mm -hmm. so no one was allowed to skip a step now whether they used it or not isn't is another question but the fact is that you know uh, i would say like over half of those people 
um, who who um, who over half the people who finished would have <coughs> would have added something, would have integrated something. I can't I can't guarantee if they were using it though at that point. Hello, Vicky. Hi, yeah. I'm Brian. Hello. Hi there. I just wondered if you could um, mention Genesis because um, some while back somebody told me that uh, when WordPress code is updated, it could actually put things out of kilter on your theme. And Genesis actually prevents that happening. Um, I'm not sure of Genesis specifically, but I think with Divi in particular, because you connect it to the Divi API from within the WordPress admin, it just means that the theme is kept updated alongside WordPress on a regular basis. Um, so um, that I haven't found with Divi that it breaks sites in the way that other themes, uh, perhaps uh, free themes can do when you don't update them. Right. Um, so, you know, you have that security by being attached um, to the Divi API that you know you're always going to have um, the most recent version or as quick as they can keep up with, which is pretty quick, piped into your WordPress admin. Thank you very much. That's okay. Vicky, have you got any thoughts about um, now that Gutenberg's becoming a bit more of a, a part of core, um, whether you feel that will take over from Divi eventually? That's such a good question. So actually, what, what I didn't cover here, like in the hour, because there's so much to cover, um, <laughs> <laughs> is um, one of the things I don't recommend um, the boot campers do is create their blog posts using Divi or create their, you know, their product pages from WooCommerce with Divi and to actually just use um, the inbuilt Gutenberg functionality because it's mm -hmm. just, it's very good now. You know, a couple of years ago, obviously a bit worrying and, and you know, people weren't sure what to expect, but it's, it's very lovely to use. Um, and very adequate. The reason why I don't recommend with blog posts um, to use a, a theme builder like Divi is because um, it's very possible because each of the, 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 the modules, the text modules contains your text. It can make it a little bit difficult for, um, for, for Yoast to detect that text on the page. And so this is why sometimes you might hear of um, uh, kind of clashes between you know, SEO plugins um, and, and kind of theme builders like Divi. So actually, if you can just use the native functionality, which is very good and very lovely, um, and you know, use what WordPress was built for and you know, categorize and use the category pages, um, then you, know, you, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. In terms of whether it will take over, I watch very interestingly. Um, I watch in, with a lot of interest mm -hmm. um, about you know, what happens with each and every update because I can see that that is the, the future of where Gutenberg is going to. And I feel a bit smug in a way because I've already shown my, my WordPress boot campers what it takes to um, uh, take on the concept of using a builder and using blocks and you know and, and being able to kind of have control over the layout of the page that way so yeah. i you know i feel it'd be quite exciting for you know the people in my in my world if that's where gutenberg moves to well gutenberg's yeah. already sort of got there in version 8.3 the latest one there's the ability to choose patterns where it's not as complete as divi page templates but you can at least pick something which which is a whole load of different Gutenberg blocks put together in a way you might ne not necessarily have thought about yourself. So you can import something and then say, all right, I can change that and then get a bit, get a good understanding of how the blocks may fit together, especially when you're working with columns and other slightly more complicated things. Yeah, it's exciting times, isn't it? Anybody else have any questions? Nikki Thank said in applause. Yes. Everyone's mic on and clap, please. <laughs> now I will say thank you very much, Vicky. That it has been thank really, really interesting. Me. Thanks for having me. And um like I like I said, um if you're a seasoned WordPress person, then hopefully what you've been able to get out of this is seeing the process that I've taken to kind of very new business owners about how to get up and running. And if you are new to this, then hopefully it's giving you inspiration that you can go out there 
um, and, and do this by utilizing a process, by going through it systematically and step by step. So good luck, everyone. <laughs> and thanks for having me again. <laughs>